In this video, we're going to take a look at the William Optics Bino Viewers, what I think are the best budget Bino Viewers on the market today. And so one thing you'll notice right off the bat is you do get a very nice case, and we'll go ahead and open that up. Uh, it comes very nicely protected with foam. Of course, it pulled the uh, various lens caps off and such. You can see here, uh, you, do re you do get the bino viewers as well as the two 20 millimeter eyepieces, which give you a 66 degree field of view. And then there's also a 1.6X, uh, it's basically it's like a Barlow, um, it's a corrector lens to help you achieve focus in uh, refractors and, and that kind of thing. But with an SCT, you don't need it, but you can obviously use it to boost your magnification. Now these 20 millimeter eyepieces I have found in the past to be really nice. Uh, they give you a, a pretty sharp view overall, especially if you are looking at them through a longer focal length telescope like an SCT. Um, a short refractor, you may have you know, some issues on the outer part of the field uh, of view, but um, it does for the most part work really well. The eye relief is nice, and uh, they are a really nice eyepiece to start off with if you are getting into bino viewing. And one really nice thing that I like a lot about these William Optic Bino Viewers uh, is that out of all the Bino Viewers that I've used, um, these are by far, in a way, the lightest weight and the smallest physically uh, of the uh, standard Bino Viewers you're going to be able to find out there. Uh, and that has a couple advantages. One, obviously, you're not hanging a lot of weight on the back of your telescope, which can help with balance problems. And also, because they are fairly small, you have a fairly short uh, path length for the light to go through the, the overall bino viewer setup. So if you are using like an SCT, for example, you're only going to add about 100 millimeters of uh, back focus um, to your setup. And so that can help you prevent from losing some, uh, um, some aperture. In some cases with a bino viewer, if you are using an SCT, to, you, know, you have to adjust focus so much. If you're not using an OCA or Barlow type of setup in front of it, you have to, you have to change the focus so much that you'll end up seeing that, that uh, you actually end up losing a little bit of aperture because you're moving the mirror so much, you're getting some vignetting of the light cone and you're not getting your full aperture uh, set up. But with a shorter albino viewer setup like this, that does allow you to, uh, to keep things pretty com compact and uh, limits any loss of overall uh, aperture you might see. Now, one thing with a budget bino viewer setup like this, it's kind of potentially hard to tell here, but um, there is not a very, very large clear aperture. It's something on the order of uh, only 21 millimeters, perhaps 20 millimeters, uh, something like that. But really this limits the, the size of the eyepiece you can use in terms of the focal length. It comes with a 20 millimeter, 66 degree apparent field of view eyepiece, or two of them actually. And that's as high as you can go without getting vignetting. So if you try to put like 24 millimeter panoptics in here, uh, you're going to have vignetting of the field of view. There's just not enough. The light cone coming out of the bino viewer is just not large enough to uh, fully illuminate that whole eyepiece. And so you are going to see the outer part of the field darkened and so forth. And so you can't really go any larger than this 20 millimeter that's included. Obviously, you can go to like a you know a 12 or a 10 millimeter eyepiece, and that's not going to be a problem at all. But uh, you can't go any wider than that 20 millimeter. 66 degree field of view. So um, that is one limitation. And obviously if you have a more expensive pair of bino viewers, you get that little bit larger field of view. Now in terms of the setup, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just a matter of slipping the two eyepieces in there and getting this set up in your telescope. And one thing, and then pretty much just adjusting for your interpupillary distance, basically to uh, you know, make sure that your eyes are centered on each eyepiece. Uh, and putting that in your telescope, potentially with the, uh, the OCA screwed onto the front, and you're pretty much ready to observe. I'll go ahead and I'll be using these here in the coming days, and then I'll kind of uh, give a summary here at the end of the video about how these, uh, how these new pair have worked out for me. So I've been using the William Optics Bino Viewers now uh, for several weeks, and they've worked out really well for me in the 6-inch SCT that I have uh, as my primary uh, observing telescope. I've actually tried them out as well on my 70mm uh, Teleview Ranger, and it works pretty well in there. Now with a telescope as small as, as, as the Ranger or you know any other type of 70 or 80 millimeter or smaller telescope, you are limited in aperture in terms of overall light gathering. So when you do use bino viewers, you are going to lose a little bit of light because it does split the light into each eye. And your brain does recombine that light and kind of produce a brighter image than you would see 
from either eyepiece individually, but you do still lose uh, a little bit of magnitude in terms of how deep you can see uh, with bino viewers versus a single eyepiece, generally speaking. Um, but nonetheless, I still generally prefer to use bino viewers for most uh, planetary type objects. Um, uh, some star clusters, you know, and, and some nebula, but a lot of times if it is a faint deep sky object, I'm going to want to use a single eyepiece and not the bino viewers for something like that where it's a little bit harder to see because that little bit of extra light gathering you get with a single eyepiece can certainly help you out in terms of being able to either make out or not make out a faint object. But uh, definitely for planets though, this uh, bino viewers really do help you see a lot more detail. You, you're just more relaxed, you can use both eyes and that does typically help you see more detail in general. And, and your brain kind of helps cancel out uh, some of the seeing uh, turbulence and that kind of thing too when you have both eyes. So just, just you have more data going in your brain and, and that does generally uh, help you see a little bit more detail. Um, so it does help out in that regard. Now, if you do have the, if you do pick up the William Optics Bino viewers, the really nice thing is that you do get a 1.6x uh, multiplier kind of OCS device you can attach to the bottom of the Bino viewers. You're going to need that to be able to use them with any type of refractor, unless you have a refractor that can be uh, shortened in some way to allow them to reach uh, reach focus. Um, now, what you also can do though is you can stack these, and I actually have a second one. Uh, it's, it's a different uh, it's a different magnification. This is a 1.25x, I believe, uh, multiplier, um, and you can get uh, you know uh, some uh, some Barlow lenses. Actually, you can unscrew the bottom and screw those onto an eyepiece and, and onto the bottom of yours. And so you can kind of you know stack these. You got to be careful though. If you stack too many, you're going to you know end up with this really ungainly thing sticking out of your uh, your diagonal. But you can st stack a couple of them up to increase the magnification and thus not need as many eyepieces. Uh, especially when you're starting out, since you do need two eyepieces, obviously, for whatever magnification you want to get. Um, if you're going to purchase I, I, you know, eyepiece sets, like a 12 or a 10 millimeter set of eyepieces, you have to buy two of them, and so it's going to cost more money. And so just buying, you know, uh, William Optics has a, you get the 1.6x uh, multiplier uh, Barlow lens with the Bino viewers as you buy them. They also sell a 2x one, which is really handy, so you can screw that into the bottom instead of the 1.6x one and double the magnification. Um, now again, if you are using this with an SCT, you don't need it at all. You can just put it, put them in there in, into the diagonal directly and reach focus and then use the 1.6X, uh, you can screw that on the bottom and uh, you know get an extra magnification boost uh, with that. And then you can purchase their 2X1 for maybe $35, $40, whatever it is. And then you know, have a, essentially a third set of eyepieces, a third, a third set of magnifications. And so if you buy one extra set of eyepieces, uh, you know, you have these 20, maybe you buy like a 12 millimeter uh, set of lenses, and then you have these uh, Barlow attachments, and you're using an SCT telescope that you can pretty much be set. You're gonna have multiple magnifications. That's pretty much gonna cover everything you might need. And so that works out pretty nicely uh, if you do make use of these. Now, another option, if you want to go uh, sort of a little bit more convenient, head towards a little bit more convenience, you can use zoom lenses in here. Um, you can buy sort of like a cheap zoom, a cheap set of zoom lenses. Like Celestron has a decent zoom lens um, that goes eight to twenty-one or twenty-four millimeters, um, but it's a narrower field of view. But they're cheaper, like eighty bucks or something like that. Uh, really nice zooms are the Bader zooms, uh, but those are going to cost you like two hundred and ninety dollars new, somewhere in that range. And so a pair of those is going to be over five hundred dollars. Uh, you can get them cheaper used, certainly. And sometimes you can get them on sale as well, new, and pay less than that. But uh, but that's going to cost you more than the actual bino viewers did. However, that would allow you to you know just change the eyepiece magnification you know by by twisting it anywhere from 24 all the way to eight millimeters, and so that you get basically get a whole set of eyepieces you could use in that regard. And so that would really you know be very convenient in terms of not having to change eyepieces, not having to change the Barlow at the bottom. And so that is a convenient way to go, but a very expensive one if you want to do something along those lines. Uh, I would recommend you know, making sure they're collimated, they work well with your eyes, and that you can merge the images without any problem. And if you have a problem with them, uh, re return it right away and get another pair. Again, I've never had a problem with these. I've owned two of these in my life. I have not had a problem with either one of them, and they work great for me. And so uh, I had previously upgraded to a higher end pair of Dank 2s. Um, and then I eventually sell those and went back to these um, just because, uh, you know, for the work that I'm doing with them, you know, these work fine and they're, and they're a lot cheaper. And, but so anyway, that's just a quick uh, look at the William Optics Bino Viewers. Again, these are a great budget entry Bino Viewer you can buy for, uh, for under $300 and they're really nice and I would definitely highly recommend these if you are looking to get into Bino Viewers. I think these are the best budget ones that are on the market right now.
So anyway, that's a look at the William Optics Bind of yours, and thanks for watching. Bye.